Ah, love a good London new build. This here is Mass Key 2, part of a brand new development that was just finished as of last year in Woolwich in East London. It features 204 purpose-built flats, and due to the property prices in this area of Woolwich, it's estimated to be in value of over 90 million pounds. Now, residents have just finished moving in as of last year, so it might surprise you to find out the local council, the Royal Borough of Greenwich, have just ordered the demolition of this building. And what might surprise you even more, I kind of agree with the council here. Let me explain. If you've been living under a rock for the past decade, you might not know the UK is currently experiencing a bit of a housing crisis. But then again, you're probably only living under that rock in the first place because it's so bloody expensive to buy a house in this country. So given the state of housing in the UK and London specifically, why is it that the Royal Borough of Greenwich has ordered this demolition? Well, it's less reason and more reasons. 26 of them, in fact but there's some context missing here. My name is Evan Edinger, and if you watched my previous video in this series, you know that UK housing developers have been skirting around the law for ages, finding any way they can to avoid building affordable housing, and the housing that they do build ends up falling apart within a few years. This has a knock-on impact of all residents in the area, and also looks quite bad on the council. I'll link my previous video in the series above. So further on the discussion that we talked about last week, I think the local council's decision here just kind of makes sense as, as a sort of straw that broke the camel's back sort of situation. like. Enough is enough. All right, Evan and Woolwich, how different could it be? And so, this is what the Royal Borough of Greenwich was promised, and this is what was delivered. Ugh. Again, from another angle, this is what the Royal Borough of Greenwich was promised, and this is what was delivered. Yikes. Yes, one of the many reasons why this development has been ordered to be demolished is just because, damn, it is really ugly compared to what they were expecting. Now, obviously, having seen it myself and gone walking around, uh, I mean... Obviously, when you compare it to the ones next door that the developer was supposed to match, yeah, it is significantly uglier, but I mean, uh, uh, there's, what are the other reasons? The other reasons gotta be bad, right? Yeah. Now, before we go into detail about what Greenwich alleges is different on the inside of the building, I mean, I think most people can visibly tell that there is a huge difference in what was promised to what was delivered. The original designs had much larger windows, had much more glass involved, the balconies wrapped all around, there was a lot more natural light. Whereas these new designs look like they were designed by some sort of budget airline. The colors of the orange is even different to the buildings that are right next to it, which at the very least, I, I don't think you were saving a lot of money by changing the color of the paint, right? But then again, probably they did. <laughs> the main issue at the crux of this is just how many things were changed without seeking adequate planning permission, because probably if they had sought to get planning permission to make these changes, they would have been refused outright. So the developer decided to make the changes and then apply afterwards, hoping that this would all go down okay, which as you could tell, it has not. Now, if you're not aware of the cultural phenomenon of the UK of planning permissions, the UK as a culture are obsessed with the bureaucracy surrounding around planning permissions. Part of the reason the humor hits so well about the scheduled demolition of Earth as written in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is just because of how comically realistic that scenario would be in Britain. They take planning permission incredibly seriously. You've probably seen a bit of news stories throughout the years of families that decide to build extensions onto their home, maybe build an extra floor, and they get away with it until some neighbor reports them and they're like, well, you should have actually gotten planning permission permission. Now, demolish everything that you did and apply appropriately. God. <laughs> rules are rules, sure. But what quite surprises me is that the ultra-wealthy developers are being treated the same way by the law as the local families. That's surprisingly fair. Oh, Evan, it's just an ugly building. That's not so bad, right? Well, here's something I'd like you to consider. You can visibly see that there's quite a big difference between what was expected and what was delivered. But what about those invisible differences? What about the things on the inside of the building? What about the build quality that you won't know about until four to five years down the line? If so much was drastically different between what was expected and what was promised on the outside, I can't imagine the inside is any better, especially when it con considering that it looks like the developer was trying to make a paper snowflake with this building, you know, with all the corners they were trying to cut. Luckily for us, Greenwich Council have listed the 26 differences that they found between planning permissions and what was delivered and why they have ordered the demolition. Let's go over those now, shall we? Number one, we've got changes to materials, design, appearance, and fenestration pattern. That is what I was talking about earlier, the outside, no top floor setbacks. This is the rooftop being drastically different to the other ones, omission of curtain walling in block E, alternations to design and locations of balconies, also omitted in places, and large footprint. So one of the tower blocks was increased in size by 5.9%, and the other one was increased by 4.6%. I mean, that's great, there's more room, 
that's such a huge difference in a giant building that's supposed to be there for as long as possible. Now, originally the plans had lots of green spaces, a lot of amenities that the residents could use. However, we have number six here, lack of communal amenity space on the roofs that's been removed, the play space, not anymore, and the green roofs, nope. None of those anymore. The footbridge is not in accordance with the approved plans. So they actually had to build a footbridge and ah, they just changed that up as well. The substation was moved inside of both blocks, reduced the commercial space in block D. As a result, block E, there's no commercial units that were promised at the bottom of the floor to make sure that there's at least some sort of business down there. The original approved external structure had some sort of roof garden for residents and members of the public to visit, but that's just not been delivered at all. And I know you might be thinking, okay, some of these can be added in post, right? Sorry, YouTube editor. Yeah, just, just slap it on in post. Oh, the colors are wrong? I just col color grade that outside orange. Or just add the rooftop garden. There are a few of these that hypothetically can be fixed. Like the developer can add the roof garden. They can fix the footbridge, but then it gets worse. Then we have the wheelchair units are substandard. Okay, we've got access to balconies via step instead of chamfered edge access for wheelchairs. So as opposed to the original designs where all of the balconies had a small ramp, so people that have to use a wheelchair are able to use their balconies, or you could visit your friend that lives here. And if you're in a wheelchair, well, sorry, you can't go on the balcony. It's now a step access. This is why we have planning permissions so that we can have this sort of thing standard, make sure everyone, regardless of their mobility, is able to access the property, but it gets worse. It is such a shame that when developers like this are looking to cut a few corners to save a bit of money, they don't think maybe our managers shouldn't be paid six, seven figure bonuses. Instead, why don't we make, make the place worse to live in for people that are disabled, such as even more. We have the power assisted doors not in place. We have internal layout of wheelchair units substandard. You know how much room you need to, when you have a wheelchair specifically, for instance, in parking bays, where if there's a handicapped space, you need to have space for the person to get out of their wheelchair. You can't just put them as standard. This is why we have rules. Yet again, another one, balconies, insufficient depth to allow 1.5 meter turnaround for wheelchair users, contrary to what the plans were submitted. And instead of the commercial space that was promised in Block E, they were given a residence gym, which is nice but that's not the same thing. If you wanted to have, I don't know, a pharmacy, some sort of prep, it is London. Instead you get a members only gym, so it can only be used for members of this tower block as opposed to the community, not what the council wanted or what the council was promised. Oh, and I, if I kept reading specifically, allegedly this is made worse for wheelchair users where the gym has provided stepped access, rendering it inaccessible for those with mobility impairments, such as wheelchair users. Wow, yet again, all the corners that have been cut are to the ramps. And even though they increased the size of the tower block without planning permission, they decreased the size of the commercial floor space in block D. And it's unclear if the mezzanine level will be provided at all, as it's no longer possible to even go through with the approved one. So it's not even like they can fix this in post at this point. The council is alleging the developer has made it so that the original plans can't be done at all. The approved commercial floor space for Block E is totally omitted from the new development. Changes to the stair core has had a knock-on effect to the unit layouts, private terraces, and access to arrangements for the commercial and residential users. Finally, getting towards the end here, we have changes to glazed materials has led to a reduction of daylight. God. <laughs> Sunlight and reduced outlook in comparison to approved plans. I really appreciate that even that has been listed here as a change because natural light in your house is a huge effect on your mental health. So the fact that these ones are just smaller windows, the glaze is different, way less natural light. London has pretty great public transportation. And one of the big considerations that a lot of London boroughs have when they're building a new tower block is just how car dependent the development will be. And if they do have car parking spaces, they will be put below ground so that everyone can enjoy life without it looking like Houston, Texas. And that is one of the considerations that Greenwich went through when approving the original original plans for Mass Key 2. However, they say that the basement is not reflective of the approved plans and the lack of car parking space in the basement has just been replaced with car parking space on the surface. So completely different than what they wanted, which was a lot more green space. Instead, we get an asphalt paradise. This results in a car dominated public realm. Wow, Greenwich Council based, not just bike stands. <laughs> we have landscaped area around the Thames Tidal Inlet to Northwest Corner has not been approved. And final two here, we have an alternation in the internal layouts for a large number of units with the quality of the accommodation materially worse in several instances. And lastly, the play space provision, not as approved. Areas on communal roof terraces, not provided. Proposals for ground floor provision appear watered down from the approved scheme. So 
I think you can understand why Greenwich is incredibly pissed off here. Now, I only think it's fair to hear from the developer as well, to hear what their thoughts are on all of this, because at the end of the day, calling for the demolition of a tower block that is brand new is quite unheard of. At least I've not seen any news about that before. Now, lucky for us, we can know exactly what Comer Homes Group think about all this because they made a nifty little website with an FAQ or a FAQ. And fact me, it looks interesting. The first question on the FAQ is, why has the Royal Borough of Greenwich Council issued an enforcement notice instructing Comer Homes Group to demolish Mass Key Phase 2? A good question. The response, well, the council allege that the completed development is not consistent with the 2012 planning permission and alleged 26 differences. Okay, yes, it's true. However, Comer Homes Group is YouTuber thumbnail face shocked and surprised by this decision, especially following continued unsuccessful attempts to engage with the council on various matters over the past five years. Chroma Homes Group remains steadfast that the council position is inaccurate and misrepresents the situation. One, they exaggerate the differences. Okay. I mean, visibly, you could tell there are big differences. I don't think there's much exaggeration happening, but I mean, uh, uh, B, they confuse building control and planning matters quite a bold claim to say that the council is unaware of the planning laws, the council that make those laws. But hey, let's continue. Uh, they have refused to engage constructively with Comer to remedy the issues. Well, here's the thing. If you expect to be able to just break the law and do what you want and then fix it in post and just say, hey, look, we did all these changes without your permission and expect them to just be happy about it, I think that is a bit bizarre. And lastly, they have demanded the demolition of the development, which is unprecedented, unreasonable, extreme, and wholly disproportionate. <laughs> All right. Uh, Comer Homes Group maintains that the issue with the council is one focused on building control and not planning permission. All right, interesting, but I have more questions. Like, for instance, why is the external look of the building so different than the 2012 planning permission? Now, this is actually quite an intriguing answer. They say the original planning permission was 10 years old and out of date, and the original designs had an external facade that would not comply with post-Grenfell regulations. Now, this is really interesting. For those of you unaware, we had a horrible disaster a few years ago. A tower block in London had a very combustible facade. A lot of people ended up dying. There still hasn't really been real justice for the victims of Grenfell. And basically, after then, there was a lot more regulations in place to make sure that developers had to ensure that not just the insides of the building weren't combustible, but also the cladding. Now, in this case, in this response, that's quite interesting. The fact that they were like, the original building planning permission was actually not Grenfell compatible. It would have actually been detrimental and unsafe. Given that the old plans wouldn't comply with post-Grenfell regulation, wouldn't you then draw it up again and send the new plan to the council so they could approve it rather than just go, I don't know, there's new regulations. We'll just, you know, play it by ear. We'll just build it and uh, we'll just apply afterwards. No, that's not how it works in the UK. So they did answer the question of why the external bits of the building are so visibly different. It's just, you know, I'm sure they could have worked with the council to find a way to keep it looking similar to the other ones while also being post-Grenfell compliant. And I'll be honest with you guys, I am not super clued in on every single regulation that happened post-Grenfell, but I'm fairly certain there isn't a regulation that says buildings must be 5.9% larger and uh, handicapped users shouldn't have ramp access anymore. In fact, I would say that makes the building inherently less safe for anyone that is in a wheelchair because they can't actually get around as easily. But hey, it was a well-written answer for those who who don't think critically. Speak of the devil, next question. The council has alleged that the development does not accommodate disabled tenants. Is this true? The accusation is simply not true. 100% of the apartments are built to lifetime home standards. That was not the question. Um, lifetime home standards is a standard from, I believe, a couple years ago, but that wasn't the question. Furthermore, Comer Homes Group retains the freehold. Oh yeah, what a flex. We're contributing to the leasehold scam, just so you know, and we're gonna be able to make a lot more money off of the fleece holds. So it says here they retain the freehold and it's fully responsible for the management of the building, which means that all, all the homes in Mass Key Phase 2 can be adapted for the disabled residents. They're not but they can be, we just we just didn't do it. So to answer your question of uh, it doesn't accommodate, it doesn't, but but we could, but but it's not. But maybe on a apartment by apartment basis, we, we might fix things. So just ignore the fact that the communal spaces also didn't have ramps. Basically, if one of those pesky disabled come in, we'll, uh, we'll throw a ramp there, I guess. Imagine if a company did that and said, no, we only have normal parking spots. Uh, if, if one of those handicapped people comes, we'll like, I don't know, put like a blue line in the sand and then they can park. No, we, ha we have laws for a reason. We wanna make people feel welcome regardless of their mobility status. The fact that they just went, hey, uh, we'll fix it in post again. <laughs> That's not 
how it works. Because two other things not considered here. One, if someone in a wheelchair wanted to view the apartment to see maybe if this was a good fit for them and their family, oh, well, they can't even get in the bloody building and they can't even move around in the apartment. So what would make them think that they would be fixing this on an apartment to apartment basis and make them feel like they're extra? Also, if you ever have any handicapped friends that are in a wheelchair, guess they can't visit since they can't get in and can't even enjoy your balcony. This is why standards are in place. I've said that so many times, but this is why standards are in place. And this is my favorite answer on this website. Why has the commercial space been removed and replaced with a residence gym? Per wow, they, they, they're gonna have a self own here. Pretty hard to wiggle out of this question. Why was the commercial space removed and replaced with a gym? The response, the commercial space has not been removed. Uh -huh. <laughs> the area has been utilized to provide an additional amenity for residents of the building that promotes health and well-being. <laughs> Why did you remove this and replace it? We didn't. We just synonyms. <laughs> What's, they were like, thesaurus, what's another word for gym? A place that promotes health and well-being. We've not removed the commercial space. It's just being utilized by a thing that's good for health and well-being. Man, I hope the solicitor that wrote that got paid because that was beautiful. <laughs> ah, and here comes the shada shada limonada situation. The sad, sad fact that what will be the consequences if the building is demolished? Well, a hundred residents will be evicted and forced to find a new home. Don't think that's the council's fault as much as the builder, but that's just my opinion. Uh, 204 quality apartments will be lost. Yet again, I don't think that's the demolition's fault if you'd built it correctly and also gone with the planning permission process the way that you're supposed to. Don't think this would have happened. Affordable homes will be lost. Not gonna repeat myself. Uh, the average rent for homes in Greenwich is 2,575 per month, which, hey, this is actually a positive. 73% of the homes at Mass Key Phase 2 are priced below. So, yeah, that, that actually, I'm, I'm gonna give them credit where credit is due. This is true. This is actually uh, is quite a shame. Significant quantities of embedded carbon will be emitted. Oh, woe is us. That, that's the big one here. Uh, neighboring residents will endure many months of disruption. Your fault. <laughs> Millions of pounds of public money will have been spent and had been wasted with no practical purpose. It, it, what a weird self-own to post on your own website. The council is offering no meaningful help to the residents, instead advising them to seek individual support. That. That, I'd say, is actually pretty shitty. So. Either way, it just feels like the developer has taken a shit in your bag of crisps, and when the council has come around and said, you need to throw away your bag of crisps, the developer is like, gosh, how could the council do this? You loved those crisps. <laughs> they were your favorite prawn cocktail, you monster. Well, as you'd imagine, the developer has decided to appeal the council's decision to demolish the building, and so we'll see probably by the end of the year whether or not this building still stands. But regardless of what building is in this place, I'm pretty sure that the residents here will treat this area as more of a scratchy jumper. You know, because it's wool itch. I'm sorry. So that's the situation. At the end of the day, it is quite a complex issue. It's not really an easy decision to make to say whether or not you demolish it or not. Like I said, if we choose not to demolish this building, maybe there are a lot of invisible problems with the build quality that come out much later down the line, and those residents that are happy now that they have a place to live are going to be devastated when possibly their value of their place goes down to zero. They can't sell it. You know, there's holes in the ceiling, like the video I talked about last week, where the new builds just have a lot worse quality. And again, by leaving this type of building up, we are signaling to developers, yeah, you can just skirt around the law and not go for planning permission because you've got enough money and enough sway, you can do whatever you want. But there is also a huge human element to this, and there are people's lives that are going to be negatively impacted. And it's not so easy to just put blame on one or the other, though as much as I like to say like, 100% developer fault, they picked this up from another developer and it is complex. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this, whether or not you think it's acceptable to demolish this place or whether or not the council should find a way to work with the developer to fix their sins. I've been told my segues are getting really, really good. So if you think about it, this building has way less commercial floor space available to them, which is a detriment to everyone in the community. But if you would like to have an increase in commercial floor space, online? Well, you can sign up to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. If you're unaware, Squarespace is your all-in-one website builder. For those who want to build a blog, who want to have a good place to showcase their portfolio of photography, if you want to have a web store that's easy to run, works with a lot of different mail providers, and it's just so easy to get out the gate running with an amazing looking professional designed website, Squarespace is for you. They've got so many different templates to choose from. You can customize it as you see fit. And if you sign up to squarespace.com slash or use code Evan at checkout, 
Can you believe you get a 14 day trial for free? Try it out, build your own website, see what you think. And when you find out, hey, I actually really like this, you can get 10% off your first subscription. So thanks Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And I guess I'll wrap this up. Now, usually at this point in the video is when I'm like, hey, you can watch this other video, but I'm actually more interested in hearing your thoughts. So if you wouldn't mind taking some time out of your day, I'd love to hear your comments uh, about what your thoughts are on the situation. Otherwise, part three in this series is coming out in a couple weeks or so. So uh, subscribe for that. Anyway, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye. Did you hear that? <laughs> he just, is this in between or is a cop just pulled someone over and then a guy walking by went, you getting pulled over, wanker. I didn't, I didn't know, I, I didn't know that. I thought that was just something characters did. These people, Woolwich people. <laughs>